Welcome to Video Day Parts Week. We just got this haul tree in today and we're gonna take it off the trailer and put it in the shop and see what's going on with it. Let's go ahead and get this thing unloaded. Okay, we got her in the shop. This is the uh, the mirror that goes up there. These are the this is the parts where it holds the umbrella. You put the umbrella in here, and it keeps the water in there. These are all attached to the side someplace. I need to figure that out. And the customer wants this thing back to original condition. They don't want this paint on here anymore. This is oak. They want me to strip it down. They want me to repair it and make it look like it did when it was bought. Looks like this is made out of several pieces of wood that's put together. There's no uh, joints of any kind in here, no dominoes or mortise and tenons, no dowels. It's, it's probably just a glued together um, with these seams here. So we'll have to take this apart and clean all this up. I'm gonna put dowels in there to make it a little bit stronger because we don't want this, to, this situation to occur again. And Here's a seam here that's been glued back before. You can see that. I don't know if this is high glue or not. It kind of looks like it. Um, this thing does have a lot of nails in it, which causes an issue because it's a pain to take nails out. But we just have to deal with it. On the front side, it looks like someone did a repair. Possibly, I don't know. Say like maybe it was cracked here and the nails were pushed in this way. I don't know. I've got to look at it, take it apart. So let's go ahead and lay this thing down. And let's get busy. Let's uh, let's figure this out. Whoo! All right. Yep. See, that's got to be fixed, or a new part needs to be made. We'll just fix that. This one had dowels in it, that's why it's so tight. I didn't think it had any dowels in it, so it does. So that's pretty awesome. Let's see if we can get this one off. And these are the hardest to take apart because they're bound in the corner and you got to kind of work it two ways at the same time to get her out there we go come on there we go here a spider there a spider everywhere a spider spider Okay, we've got it broken down in its basic components. Everything is, you know, separated. There are a few repairs that need to be done with this. You know, for example, like this piece here. Um, and I have not taken this apart. I'll, I'll do this later. I'll focus on the seat part, the back part, legs and whatnot right now. And no better than the present to start cleaning and stripping and sanding and getting this, getting this done. Don't know where I'm going to start yet. I'm going to sit here and go through it and see exactly what needs to be done. Actually, what we could do first is we could just uh, we could just go ahead and get this work on this seat and strip the seat and get this seat ready to go. We're going to put dowels in here, clean this up, and we'll flatten these two mating surfaces and make sure that's perfect. And let's just go ahead and start with this. Let's get these nails out of here and um, let's start with the seat right now. Some good looking oak, isn't it? These two surfaces are mating surfaces, and you can see the old glue that's in there, some old wood filler, a lot of stuff. So 
there's a lot of old wood floors. So what I'm going to do is just to get rid of the heavy stuff, I'm just going to tar scrape it off. I just got a saw blade and cut it in half basically and folded the edges, made a car scraper from it. This is a big heavy duty car scraper when I don't want to use my little finesse one so I can get rid of surfaces like this with a quickness without having to sand it and jump up sandpaper and you know all the rest of the stuff you got to do. Okay, this is the seat. We clean the grain up with the card scraper. I just marked on here for visual purposes that you know which way the grain is going. Fortunately, there looks like grain is going both ways. So if you picture this being a tabletop, and this is where you put your food and you sit down and eat, and it's just where everything goes, you know. If you close this up and put the tabletop to the inside, and we're going to plane this way where the arrows go, we close these up and we match. And we, and we put these together and we plane in this direction because that's the little direction of the grain. And we're going to plane it together. That's the way if there's any falls left or right or anything, when we open it back together, they're going to match perfectly. So here's the gap that we have now. We're going to close it up, turn it upright, get the plane right here. And we're going to plane this to a smooth, flat surface so we can marry these surfaces back together. And you know, it used to be all yucky, yucky like that. We cleaned it up. That's plain it so it matches. Okay, we've got these set up. The tabletop's on the inside. Remember, you open it up and that'll be the tabletop. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the number four plane. And with the reason why we're going to do that, it's such a short sole, a short distance. So when you plane with this, it can follow the undulations and the weirdness and the, you know, what's a little bit wrong with the wood and the curves and stuff. Because it's so short, it'll follow those a little bit better. And then once we get it basically flat, and then we'll come in with a longer plane, a number five, that has a longer surface that will reference over the over a longer period, making it flat. So any any if the plane is this way, it's exaggerated right now. This way a little bit, or this way a little bit. When we open it up, it'll they'll match because we plane them together. The curves will be that uh, angle will be on both of the boards, so they'll still match up. That's why we're going to do it this way. Now this is the number eight. This is for joining big, long, long boards, and it's the eight joiners plane, that's what you call it. So, um, of course, that's overkill for this job. And this is a jack plane, which is supposed to be used. It's a jack plane, it's a jack of all trades kind of thing. But I'd rather use the, 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 the three most, I mean the four most of the time. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the three, get it relatively flat, get this started out, and then we're gonna go ahead and go to the five, and then we're gonna go, well, we're not gonna go to the eight, because that's overkill. So anyway, we've got the grain, grain direction correct. Let's go ahead and um, get this flat. All right, we're gonna switch it up. We're gonna go to the five. A little bit longer with the reference surface. We don't know, not getting anything. Let's go down a little bit with the iron. There we go. See? Now, we're gonna make this flat. That might be it right here. Let's stop right there. Let's go ahead and take this out of the clamps and open it up. Okay, let's see what we got. All right. That's so our tabletop is on the inside, right? So let's open this up. Let's see if we fix that crack. We sure did. It's flush and it's flat together. The reason why you got that shadow there is because it's not it's not flat, uh, but it will be flat. There's a little bit of bow there because I've got it clamped up and it's bowing it just a tiny bit. But anyway, that's what that does, and we got that done. Seat fixed. You know what? Might as well go ahead and dial this and uh, get this together now, and this will be done. I'll show you how to do that. First thing we're going to do is line up the pieces end to end, and then you, I'm going to mark this for dowels. I came in six centimeters from here i came in six centimeters from here i put a mark and then i measured the whole thing which is 46 centimeters and i put uh half of that is 23 so i put a mark at 23 centimeters and then i'll just get my straight edge and i'll mark a line straight across without moving and gyrating anything and i'll mark these 
I mean, it's just wherever it's going to be, it's going to be. But the line has got to be straight across both of them. And then we'll drill a hole in there. We'll dial this together for strength. And then we'll, um, after we do that, we'll move on to the next, another part. Okay. I'm going to put three dowels in this seat. And we're, we need to read these reference lines for that. And we're going to use this uh, new doweling jig that I got. We're going to try it out for the first time. Okay, I'm setting up the, the depth of my, my bit. I know it's dark. I'll try to use the flashlight off my, off my drill. Um, so all I did was put it in the, 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 the hole that you drill through. And I'm just eyeballing how much do I want sticking out. That's all I'm doing. And um, I'm dropping it in there. So, well, that looks good. And I just put a piece of tape on it. And that's it. That's how I get the depth of it. And then now I'm going to show you how we drill so they can line up and match. Okay, this is a, a self-centering jig. So when you put this on here and you clamp it down, this hole or these holes will be centered on your workpiece. This is the one that I've used for 100 years. I bought this off Facebook Marketplace. And it's not a self-centering jig, but once you find the center one time, you don't have to find it again. It's lined up every single time. The mark that you put on here, you line up with the mark that's on that jig. So you'll line it up right here right and you clamp this down and then you can drill through and you can move it over to your next mark well this one it's got the same idea there's a mark inside and it's hard to see but it's right down in here and there's four marks and we're going to use this one and you do the same kind of thing you just line that mark up and it's one step faster because this is a self-centering one you tighten it down and that should be the center of the board so you drill down through there and I'm referencing from the line face, or from this, from where I put the lines, or if you will, the pot you put your bottom on to sit where the tree goes. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'll show you this one. I could put a stop on here, but there's no reason to. I can just watch the tape. Now, I'm referencing, like I said, from the part you sit down on, or the lines, the side that I drew the lines on. I'm gonna just go down to my tape. I always use a brad point when I do this. I get nervous using the other bits. Start off nice and easy. And I found with these jigs, you gotta let the uh, the uh, your waist come out often because they'll get clogged up in there quick. I'll just go down to my depth. That's it. Move the jig over to the next line. Rinse and repeat kind of situation. Line your little line up where your pencil mark is. Tighten her down, and then go to town. Move to the next mark. Okay, I've got all three drilled. I'm just going to remove it. And I'm going to put the, the next one in. Now remember, these two boards go together this way, right? So I must reference off the same side, same surface. Even though I'm going to flip the board around this way so I can see it, I'm still referencing off the same side. So that's uh, sometimes gets me backwards so these will go together like this right that's how we do our lines so now we're going to get our jig and we're going to line it up I know it's hard to see that pencil mark on the board but I'm gonna line the line up on my jig and then tighten it down on my line so now it should be the same place as the other side that, that's married up to this, matches up to this. Let's go ahead and drill our three holes. True test is do they line up with dowels in it? That's the true test of the jig. Or it could be the operator. <laughs> Let's find out. Alrighty, let's find out how deep our hole is. Our hole is that deep, so we go twice that minus two thicknesses of a blade. I'll show you how we're going to do that. Remember, measuring is the uh, furniture maker's enemy. I'm not measuring, I'm going off the distance. I don't even read this. I measure stuff every now and again, but not really. So I'm just going to put this here. 
that's one hole depth. This is two hole depths, right? So that's that's both those sides. That goes in this side and this side. Just to be safe, I cut it about two or so uh, blade curve thickness on the blade short. So when I'm putting it together, I don't bottom out and there's a gap in my joint. That's kind of the rule I use since I messed messed things up before. Normally I'll make my own dowels. However, this time this is repair and I'm not making this from scratch. So this is my dowel making jig. If I'm going to make something 100% by hand, by me without buying anything, then this is what I use for making my dowels. This is a 3 8 dowel right here. That's a store bought oak dowel. That's my 3 inch inch hole. Basically the idea is you get your square stock, you put it in your drill and you drill it through and it makes it or you pound it through with a hammer however you want to do it. And it makes your dowels. You can see this thing has got a lot of good use out of it. But at the same time, and a lot of money for the customer, we're not doing this by hand. We're going to do store bought dowels. Let's go ahead and cut this. The reason why we taper this on the ends is when you're putting it in, just so it doesn't get hung up on anything inside the hole. And when you're putting them together, and if it's off a little bit, that little that little bevel will guide it into the hole. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but you know, because it'll be off. So that's why you do it. That's why you bevel those. Alright, so let's get some glue and let's assemble. This is tight bond number two I'm using. Three gives you a longer set time and it's food safe. So I use three for, for cutting boards. Okay, I tightened the clamps down uh, to squish it then. I've loosened these clamps back up and now I'm going to put some calls underneath and up top to keep this thing flat. Um, when we squish it together, there's some tape on here to keep it from uh, gluing. Um, to the to the, my workpiece. We want it flat. To make sure sure it's stuck or hung up on anything, I'll just give it a few taps while it's under pressure. And that's it. Okay, while the seat dries, we're gonna work on the back and this blue joint came apart so we're going to go ahead and put this back together there is this board this is glued together with it looks like one two three four pieces and this joint seems to be fine it was re-glued but it's just it's not coming apart i'm always afraid to to assemble something without really knowing what's going on and i hate to take it off to fix it if it's not really broken but you really never know what's going to break later so it reflects back on you as Oh, you didn't fix my piece, it's messed up, you have to do it again kind of thing. And, you know, but it's not, it doesn't seem to, I mean, it seems to be strong. But, however, there is a split in the seat here, and it looks like a, it hasn't been repaired yet, so there's no glue in there, so I don't have to take this apart to clean that joint. I just have to separate it and get some glue in there. This is that split, you can see it. And I'm going to spread this apart with some little bitty little bitty wedges that I made I'm going to open this gap up and I'm going to get some glue in there just tiny 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 bit let's go from the other side there we go so I'm going to put one more wedge in here that's it now that's all the room I've got to work with I've got to get glue down in there 
So we're going to use a combination of dental floss. Actually, I don't even think we need dental floss. I think what we're going to do is switch to tight bond number three. It's thinner. And we're going to squirt it in here. And we'll get the air pressure, the air, the air hose, squirt there into the gap, then clamp it. Let's try it that way. I think that's the best option. So all we do, make a big glue mask. And notice I'm doing this before we clean the surface up. We still have to sand all this stuff off. Okay, awesome. While this, uh, this dries, we cleaned it up. Before I put this glue this on, we're going to let this dry. While this dries, we're moving back to the, uh, the seat. It should be dry enough to take apart, get all cleaned up, clean off with glue, scrape all the rest of the, uh, the paint off the side of this thing, get this, this, get this just ready to be installed back on while the, uh, the back is going up. So let's go ahead and do this now. This is the seam that we glued right here. So it's pretty seamless as you can see. It's just the different color of grains, grain, grain patterns. That's why you can see the seam, but plane it down like that worked and it, and it matched perfectly. This is the seam originally that was there. It seems to be straight and tight, so I'm not even gonna mess with it. So the seat's done and the back is going up right now. Um, I, I think this should, well, here it is. I think we should wait longer for that. We're going to go ahead and start the legs. The legs are going to be the same process as the seat. I'm going to, I'm going to run it through the stripper. I mean, the drum sander, take all this stuff up. I'm going to card scrape all this stuff off. You can see how much filler is in here because this thing was falling apart. And so we'll fix all that. Um, but anyway, so that's going to be the procedure with this and all the rest of the parts. So um, that's it. So I'm not going to sit here and uh, video and shoot the same thing five million times um, but we will come back to this one probably probably after the legs we'll come back to this and get this uh, get this piece on there but let's go ahead and just uh, I'm gonna knock these out I'm gonna cut this dowel out and okay we're to the parts on the side of the chair and this is broken so the chair is uh, we'll just go like this. The chair comes down like this and like that. And it's got the arm thing, you know, that goes down, whatever. Now you should excuse my AutoCAD system, it's not uh, up to date. And there's two pieces of wood. There's one that goes here, one goes on the other side. Underneath where you put your bottom, and this right here is what these two are. And this one was broken. There's screws in there that hold some, holds a, a little bucket and some other stuff. I'll show you how that goes together. The tricky thing about, uh, about repairs is like when it's broken, you, you shouldn't, you know, move any of the fibers if they're not. I mean, that fits together perfectly. And it's all the broken parts are there and pieces and bits and whatnot. It'd be nice. However, there's glue in there. So I've got to get that glue and dirt out so I can make a tight seal. So then again, I'm going to use that tabletop method. I'm going to put it together. I'll just maybe one or two strokes of the plane just to clean it up, open it back up, and it should fit perfect. Then I'll dowel these. I'll put two dowels in here, glue and clamp it, and this one will be repaired. And then this one just needs to be cleaned up more. So... There we go. That's what we got. So we're going to go ahead and repair this split. I think this is uh, probably okay for number four on here. I don't like there's a knot right up here at the front. And one grain's going one way, one grain's going the other way. So that's probably all we need right there. That looks, feels nice, and it's clean. So let's take this off. Clamp it and see, see what we got. So there's the plain surface. Okay, so I think that'll be fine. All we have to do is, uh, um, whatchamacallit, um, dowel this just like we did the other one, just like we did the seat. We'll dowel this together. We've got to tackle this situation. And I've got to, uh, this has been repaired, there's some glue in here. So I've got to plane these down like I did the other parts. I've got to put them together and run the plane on here to make sure they're perfectly flat and smooth with each other. So they'll go together. I'm going to dowel this, you know, like three or four times in here. 
So it's the same process as last time. So I'm going to go ahead and get this set up. Okay, we finally got the back gluing up now. There's five gals in there. And it's, it was kind of tricky to glue this up, have these, uh, make these little spacers. There are calls on here. That's because this is, what, what did I say, four or five boards glued together. And if I were to put a lot of pressure, then I was afraid that I'd break it. Plus, this, this needs to be straight right here. And this board was a challenge to put on because this board was bowed. And it was not aligning. So the dowels were put in straight, and then I had to align it. And there's a lot of pressure on these clamps to keep this thing closed and tight and straight. So this is this is a challenging glue up right here. It looks simple, but it was it was challenging to do. These are the arms to the chair, and this is that one broken piece that uh, that was on the corner that broke off. It's been setting for about an hour. I'm gonna take these off and I'm gonna drill a hole straight through here and I'm gonna insert a dowel all the way down to about this far. And I think this will be, and then we'll clean it up after that. But I think that'll that'll keep this one breaking again. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and drill this out. God. Well, that didn't work. Try number two. It's all cleaned up. It's tight just going through that one spot. I don't know how I'm going to get it in here. I have no idea. It's, I don't know, hope for the best maybe. That doesn't work. Now we got to try something else. Okay, I clamp it in the back. Let's see if that'll work. God, it still doesn't work. I don't know what I'm going to do. Let's put it on the seat mat. Like this. Ah, that worked. I got it. Yay! Woo! This is what we came up with. It just seems to be working. I already had this part cut and this part cut for clamping uh, when I initially tried to clamp it without the dowel. But now that it's doweled, I put this huge C clamp on there and I'm clamping it in tight. I cut the dowel off and we're going to clean this up in about an hour. We're just going to let this sit. This glue squeeze out. So I'm just going to let this sit for a while and then we'll, uh, we'll clean it up after that. I'm going to keep running these, get them cleaned up. I'm, I'm, I, I found another crack in this, so I'm going to glue that up real quick. And now I'm going to go to the back part. I'm going to unclamp this. And I'm going to take these off first before I take the calls off, just in case there's still pressure on that. I don't want this thing to bend. I'm going to try to run this through the drum sander to see if uh, not I can flatten it because it is bowed and it's twisted a little bit. So I'm going to try to try to run that through the sand, drum sander. It'll barely, barely fit. It's a 16 by 32 drum sander, so you can put it in through one way, flip it, and do the other way. But anyway, let's go ahead and take this off and um, take these clamps off and let's see what's going on with this drum sander. See if we can clean this up. You can see how badly cupped it is. You always put your cup side up so the machine can reference off something without rocking back and forth. So it is cupped, and I believe it's twisted a little bit up here, but we're gonna go ahead and run this through uh, quite a few more times. The only thing we lack on this piece is a little bit of cleanup on the side and sanding with 220. This is the seam that we did. It looks really, really, really good. Came out perfectly. This board was cupped really bad. You can see in the back of it, we had to flatten this just enough skip skip plane if you will uh just enough you can see where where it's uh this is a hollow in this spot here but in the front we got rid of that so it's a little hollow in the back but the front is flat where the components go so this should go together square and straight and it shouldn't come apart again ever 
So anyway, hopefully we'll be getting done with this the next couple days. This is really, really looks really nice now. This is the part that goes in front of the chair. You know, this is our chair, right? This is the back part and it goes up like this. There's a piece that goes right here in front and your legs come down right here. You know, your little feet. This is that part, that piece of board right there. And this is doweled to the front legs. And the dowels have, uh, they've come off and they're, they're uh, how to cut some of these off. So I'm gonna redowel these and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So here's one of the dowels that, that I had cut off. I tried to pull it out and I couldn't get out. So basically all I'm doing is I'm marking just eyeballing about halfway what the dowel is. You know, that's it's gonna be close enough. And then I'll just extend that halfway line to the front and put me a little mark up front here. And then now I can use the dowel finding, the dowel uh, jig to make sure that I drill directly into that spot. And I'm gonna redial that. So I gotta drill the old dial out. Okay. Now I can dial that. Now this other hole over here, this is wallowed out. This is this is a bad thing right here. So now we want to fix this. We have to put a half inch dowel in here. It's a three fourths dowel. Fits tightly in here, We're, and it's wobbling around in here. So we have to drill this out with a half inch bit, then drill into that half inch dowel with a hole that this will fit into. So all the dowels will be the same. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I took this off my other doweling jig, and I often use it to guide for straight holes. I've already marked the depth that I need to go into my half inch. So let's get it as stable as we can, as straight as possible. Okay, there we go. Now we can drill. Now we can fill this with a half inch dowel and drill into that. And the back side is broke out, but that's okay. I'll show you how we're gonna deal with that. So we can just fill this in. Here's the half inch down. These and all, put a little hole in there so I know where to drill. Find it with a, you know, a, a, a center circle finder deal. And we're just gonna go ahead and insert this into here. And then inside that, we're gonna drill the smaller hole. This was broken. And when I drilled the hole, it finished breaking out the back side. And I'll show you that in a minute. We just need to make sure that we get the repair in there. And um, we'll be good. Here we go. Okay, this is the other side of that front panel for that chair. We drilled in there, we filled it with a half inch dowel, then we did the three fourths, you know, that goes inside there. Well, this side was cracked and we broke that out. When it was cracked, it finished coming off. So we don't leave stuff like this. Even though this is gonna be on the inside of the chair, we still not gonna leave it like this because we do good work and we don't cheat and rip people off and do shoddy work. We do real stuff. So I basically cut my patch out of this piece of wood here, this oak. I split it with a table saw and then cut it off with a band saw. I basically put some perimeter marks on there so I could get it down to kind of sort of the size I need it. Now I'm just gonna use a hand plane and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hand plane to my line. Um, so it's, so it's, uh, so it's even and straight and flat. And we're gonna insert this piece of wood on top right here, okay? We're gonna insert that, and let me get the end grain real quick. Okay, so we're gonna put this in right there. Make it a little bit stronger and fix it right. Let's do it that way. This is the same way I inlay the boat ties or butterflies. It's got some really heavy duty, sticky carpet tape. 
and I put a piece on my patch, you know, and I'll just trim, you know, like the back is still on there, and I'll just trim the excess off the patch piece that's going in. So it kind of sort of looks like this. And then we'll take the back off, and we're going to insert this back. We're going to lay this back. I mean, we're not going to lay it down. We're going to double side sticky tape it down to the part. Make sure it's oriented. It doesn't have to be really oriented yet because we're uh, just now sticking it down. So let's go ahead and stick this on. Let's take my backing off. And I'm just going to stick this on here about where my lines are kind of on the guidelines where I drew on there. And then now I'm going to label this A and A because I have to make sure when I put this back on these A's line back up because if it goes the other way it won't fit. Because we're going to razor blade it right into this particular situation right here in this exact spot. So you can use a razor blade or exacto or a marking knife or whatever. I'm just going to very lightly super lightly go into my grain. The grain is going long ways like this, and this blade will have a tendency to fly off one way or the other. So just make a little bitty scores, and then keep going a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper as you go. And then I gotta get in front of the camera. I'll, I'll slightly go against the end grain here. Just you can feel that you can feel the depth kind of sort of, of of your of your razor blade going in. See the other long grain? Make sure your part does not move. Easy scores. I lined my grain up with it as best that I could with the original part with the thing the um, you know line the grain up as best I could. There. Now we've razor blade, razor bladed all the way around the part. Now we're gonna pop this part off. A goes there. So now this is all razor blade. So now let's take this out. Okay, I have my patch, took the sticky stuff off. It's marked with a razor blade. I set up my tool. And one of the ways I do that, I just set my part up there and I just look at it and say, yeah, that's about right. And then I cut a test on a, on a scrap piece and fit it in there. You see how to do two on this. This is like exactly flush, and this one sticks up just a tiny bit, which I want because I can plane it down and make it all pretty looking. So now I've got the depth of my, my tool. I'm gonna cut this, I'm gonna cut the most of it out with, with, the, with the tool. I can do it by hand, but we're saving some time. Okay, that's it with the power tool. Now we're gonna come in and take this out with a chisel and then we're gonna put this part inside here. Drop into the razor line. I'm tilting my chisel a little bit toward me. No an easy hit, it's not all the way down. Okay, almost ready for a test fit. A to A. nice tight fit okay that's it so let's glue this in we're just going with tight bond uh, two and uh, I'm not going to put it in the hole I'm just going to stick it on the uh, my piece and I want to make sure that I get a little bit on these edges that's going to act kind of like a uh, uh, what you might call it a uh, Kind of like a sealer, kind of like uh, when I sand it down, the, the sawdust will get inside there. And this should be, oops, I forgot the back. Get the back, get the back. All right, insert it. We Now we haven't pushed this all the way home yet. Um, so my mallet. Push it back down that's 
That's it. That's inserted. So now, let that wait for a few minutes and uh, we'll come back and uh, clean this up. While the glue is a little wet, I'm gonna get sand, sawdust and put it in the glue that's wet and I'll come back and I'll make it flat with this. I just wanna get sawdust inside the glue. <laughs> Now I'm going to come back with my low angle and and um, smooth this out. Take it to the surface. I don't like to get uh, glue in my my tools. Okay. Now this is uh, this change. That was 80 grit. This is uh, 120. <laughs> There's the repair, right? Inside, you don't have a round hole anymore, but we're gonna fix that. I'll show you, I'm gonna do that. Let's go ahead and cut this piece off right here and make this flush. I'm using the board as my guide. And this one cuts on the pull stroke. I fill it and it's not exactly flat, so I'm just gonna get my low angle, which is perfect for ingrain, and then make that flush. This is this is the repair. Okay, we just put that in there. Now the hole is no longer round because we cut into it for the repair. That's fine. Because what I did is I left the jig in the same spot. I didn't move anything. All I have to do is line this up with that hole down that's down there, and then re-drill it and then that will be fixed. There we go. Repair dowel hole and cracked in the back. So this should be good to go now. Okay, I'm figuring out the assembly. Um, I've transferred my marks from the tape to my actual uh, pieces of wood, my parts. And I figured out the little square part, which needs to be done first. And um, this is the box that needs to be made. This is the left leg goes on, right leg goes on. So what I'm doing, instead of using these nails that it was built with, I'm going to glue and screw it. So I, I'm using the original nail holes in here, but I countersunk just a little bit where the screw will go in and then I tapered that countersink so the front of the screw won't crack my workpiece. It'll fit in there and it goes it goes good through the other side and it'll 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 go into the original nail hole on the other side which is a perfect size for these threads. So instead of nailing it, I'm gonna screw it together and it should it should be fine. So this box is fixing to be assembled and it should work out perfect. And I'm gonna put dowels in here with the grain, plane those off, and then it will be a nice little box and then I can assemble everything around the box. So this will work out good. I think it's a great, great plan. Okay, assembly time. We got it together. All the original holes lined up with the screws that uh, that I put in. Replace the uh, the nails with screws. And just do a little bit of glue cleanup on this. All right, I think it worked. Countersunk is where all the, the nails were. Now they're gonna be screws, dowels. It's gonna look a lot better. It's super solid. This is not gonna come apart. It should be a lot squarer than it was when I started doing the, the project. Nothing's really cut straight on this in the first place, but we'll do the best we can and then we'll assemble it. How, uh, exactly how it was uh, taken apart is how it's gonna be reassembled. If I have to cut something to make it straight, to make it better, then that's what I'll do. 
because I can tell just by looking at it, some of these parts aren't straight on here, but that's, that's the way it was originally. So if something does have to be squared up, I'll just go ahead and do it. We finally have an awesome rainstorm coming in here. That's really good. We needed it really, really, really bad. So, all right, let's continue. We have the front legs clamped on here and I'm noticing some issues. I have spent a lot of time, a lot of time flattening the back of this board so it would be flat and true because it was cupped. So we got it where it goes together. However, when you look here, there's a half inch difference between this side and this side. So it's my suspicion that this thing wasn't square when it was put together and it was forced together and it was sat in and it rocked back and forth and that's why it pulled itself apart. Found another issue with these, with the arms that you put your arms on. Well, I found this issue before, but it's worse than I thought. These, these parts aren't the same. They're not exactly the same. And I think I know why they're not the same because whoever made this had to make one a little bit different to fit it not being square. And I'll show you what I mean. Okay, granted these legs aren't exactly, exactly where they're supposed to be because they're just kind of clamped on, but they're, they're pretty close. Let me see my left side. So this is the left side. The left side goes here. And remember there's a lot of body filler and a lot of wood filler. And if that sits flush and square on the back like it should, it doesn't line up here. Okay, now granted, this isn't exactly right, so I have to pull this off here. There's a, it becomes an angle to get this centered on the support on the front leg. Well, that's why there was so much body filler in here, and I also think that's why the parts don't match. One part had to be cut for one side, the other part had to be cut for the other side. The same with this. If this, is, if this angle is on there exactly like it's supposed to be, it doesn't line up. So you have to pull it off, and again, there's body filler that had to be put in there. So. Solution to this issue, there's a few things that we can do. This is the seat that's on the table saw. My fence is straight and square. Of course, these lines are straight and square to the fence. You can see how far the seat is off. This is a half inch distance between here and here, okay? So a solution, fill this with a piece of wood to make it square or cut this so it's square. And I think I'm going to opt to cut it to make it square. Now, so when I do that, I cut it to make it square. When this is sitting, when this is sitting on the, you know, and that's the back part, arms come out. This is going to pull this whole thing a half inch closer to the back portion. However, this will be completely flat against the back part. It'll be screwed in rather than the nails. We're, we're going to substitute the nails with the screws, countersink. When we pull that together, it's going to be tight. There shouldn't be any racking. The only thing that kind of makes me nervous about racking are the front legs. The only thing that holds these on are the dowels. That's the way it was originally. I'm going to put it back that way. Um, but these dowels were, were strong. They were still okay. But the other part was falling apart. And it, the other st stuff started falling apart before the dowels gave way. And then once that happened, you couldn't sit in it. So this couldn't have any more stress. So... That's, I think, the solution to the problem is to cut this straight, take a half inch, put the blade right there, and just take this, take, put the blade as high as we can, and cut that off. Now we're gonna have a flat square surface. Let's go ahead and cut this out of here. Okay, check out the fit now. This is flat, this is flat. This doesn't wiggle, it doesn't wobble. It's on there like it's supposed to. I've got the holes basically kind of sort of lined up, you know, the original nail holes underneath there, kind of sort of lined up like they were. So, this is now fixed. Now we can, when we dial these legs on, oops, when we dial these legs on, once this is here and I put this back on, we'll, we'll make sure that the arms, we'll have to cut the arms and modify the arms a little bit when they come into here 
to make them fit. So, because they weren't fitting originally, but we've got to fix that. We've got to repair that issue. We don't want this thing falling apart. If it starts racking, it's gonna, it's gonna, same thing's gonna happen eventually. At least this part is fixed. Let's, um, what are we doing now? Let's go ahead and dowel the, uh, the front legs onto the piece. Let's do that. Before we attach the legs with the dowels, you know, the dowel thing here, and I'm nervous about this. For some reason, I think that I'm forgetting something. So I'm gonna wait on that. Oh, that's the repair we did. I I'm gonna wait on this. I I'm gonna go ahead and fix this. I forgot I gotta fix these holes right here. This is where this piece of hardware goes on here and it holds a brass bucket and that's what the uh, holds the umbrellas. Um, so I'm gonna attach, I'm gonna go ahead and dowel these. Let's say I'm the messiest glue on the planet. It's ridiculous. I'm gonna clean this up and cut those off. I'm gonna go ahead and clean these, make sure these are flat, the dowels I just put in. And you see me grabbing for this small plane constantly. This this is a, a referred to as a low angle plane. This iron, the, the, the iron right here referred to as the blade is the iron. Is 12 degrees from your work surface and it's a bevel up tool which means the bevel of the blade faces up and that's cut at 25 degrees and that gives you a 37 degree cut these other tools are bevel down tool this um, uh, dado and this uh, this number five it's a it's a bevel down tool so that's uh this is really good for ingrain these are the arms of the legs and some screws go in here and I think these are going to be wallered out. I, I don't think they're going to be. Um, I don't think they're going to hold threads anymore. So we're going to we're going to redial this with some new threads. What I'm going to do is come in with a with a one fourth drill bit and very lightly not go all the way through my part that's repaired. And we have to create new threads. Okay, exciting times now. I get attached the front assembly to the rear assembly And I'm not going to use the original holes in the back because this thing was put together so sideways So what I'm going to do I've got it on a flat surface I've centered the seat in the front component to the rear component So it's centered and it's flat. So the legs are going to be all the same So it's not going to wobble and all I have to do is come through with a With a uh, pencil and I have to mark on here all the way around where the uh, where this is and I'll come through and I'll drill holes if I can use the original holes I will this way I know where to um, you know I don't know where to hit my board we have the lines marked from the piece when it was sitting on the ground flat and you can see that this is at an angle I put my square up there you see that line isn't true okay see so this line goes off this way so I believe I know what the situation is with this so what I think it is so if I line my lines up where it was when I marked it on the floor. All the legs are right now even on the floor. Something, that, so what happened is, is one of these legs is a different length and it pulled this thing sideways and that's the way that it will want to sit on the floor. Okay, we found the solution. <laughs> However, you see the line that was drawn when it was on the floor and how off it was? Well, the seat now is square to the back. I've got it clamped in place. I'm gonna put another set of clamps here. I'm gonna pick it up, put it on the floor, and find out which one of these legs is too short. Mark the ones that need to be cut, and I have to cut just a tiny bit off of it. Or just leave it sideways. And I'm afraid to leave it sideways because I think it's going to start racking and it's going to pull itself apart again. So this thing's got to be super flat on the floor. 
super square where these structures are. I know up here it's kind of twisted. There's really nothing I can do about that. This is a super important because I want this thing to come apart again. So let's go ahead and put another set of clamps on, set it on the ground, and uh, mark the legs that need to be um, addressed and um, make the make it square. You can see how far it is off. <laughs> it's quite a bit. That's what this thing being square. So it's either cut the legs to match this one or put a spacer. I think I'm going to put a spacer down here. On my chairs that I make for my dining room tables and kitchen tables that are on hard floors that possibly could get wet, I put a spacer underneath it that's long grain. What happens is, is you have a table and this is always in grain. Water can soak up and get up inside here and eventually it'll rot it. It takes a million years, but it happens. So I always put a little cap on mine, a little thin one that's long grain. So here's a spacer that I made. It goes just like that. It's perfect thickness, the chair doesn't rock. This is long grain, so the end grain is on here, but however, the grains do not match here, but I think it's gonna be more stable this way. But if you want it to match and look pretty and not be as stable of a piece of wood, I, in my opinion, you would go long grain like this and cut that. So I think that I'm going to opt to use this piece and go long grain, and I'll put a dowel, two dowels in there, and I'll make this match up as you know the best I possibly can so the chair doesn't rock the seat will be square and uh, so this will be this way however I think it's going to be stronger than having the grain going up into here okay also another cool thing about this piece of wood I think this is the last piece I got maybe a couple more pieces the um, the person that I'm doing this for her daughter uh, removed some of a tree out of one of her properties and I made a cutting board for her out of that tree and this is some of leftover of that material. I put this aside so I know what this is. So I think it'd be cool to Im implement this piece of wood on this chair and it's her mother. So I think this would be cool. She can have a little part of history in the chair. I think I'm gonna do it that way. That's a cool little, uh, little, little bonus feature right there. So let's go ahead and do it that way. Okay, now we've got everything marked. I remarked this and yellow pencil right the old ones is this the pencil pencil mark is the sideways mark i went back reclamped it left my old marks and remarked it square and yellow this board is made up it looks like four pieces there's a there's a piece here there's a piece here there's a piece here and there's a piece here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this original hole right here i'm going to drill here in the center of this board this will go into the back seat, center two, and this big flat, and then use an original hill here. I'm gonna come in here, and I'm gonna use an original hill here and here on both sides. So there's a couple more new holes we're gonna add. Um, it doesn't line up exactly perfect because now the seat is square to the frame. The holes are just a slight bit off, so I gotta make new ones. So it looks like that's how we're gonna uh, complete this operation. got the spacer installed so that's gonna work fine we'll clean it up make it straight and square and make it look pretty later we just want to clamp it and let that dry for a while because it's in grain to side grain got dowels in there it's not gonna go anywhere it just takes longer for it to to dry there's a misconception in grain to in grain doesn't glue well it glues just fine um, but in, this is gonna be possibly scooted on the floor so we want to make sure that we support it with some dowels make it a little bit stronger The trick to lining the holes up with this thing is exactly like we did. We made sure that this was on the way it was supposed to. We clamped it, in, clamped it in place. We traced the lines around it. And then once we traced the lines around it, we drilled through this way. And then now we're going to come in and attach it from this way. So we're going to drill the holes first from the back. Get it ready to go so everything's lined up. Then we're going to glue it and then we're going to screw it on there. But we have to mark the holes first. So here's the holes coming from the other side. I countersunk the holes and just marked them which ones I know which ones are, are the ones we're gonna use. Some of these nail holes we're not gonna use because it doesn't line up because the seat's level now. 
So now we're going to come through and drill this this way to mark the seat, glue it, then we can screw it on there. Now we take this off, glue it, and all the, everything's marked. Then it's just pop the screws in or it'll hold it together. I think this is a better option than using the original nails. I think it's going to hold better because of the glue. The, the screws act as permanent clamps and it's going to hold this thing together and we're not going to get some racking. Took a minute, but now they're attached to one another and it's pretty square. <laughs> a lot better than it was originally. So um, this is a dowel that I repaired. I got to cut that off. So there we go. So all I'm doing is I'm marking with the flat part of the pencil against my, let's use this side, it's a little closer. I've already started a little bit. So, oops, I need to come out just a little bit more. So I see I can turn my pencil and it's a little bit farther out of a tool. This is the angle that I need to cut for this to be flush on here. So I'm gonna cut that angle. Now hopefully, after we cut these angles and it fits better, these will still line up like they are. So this, this is actually nine and a, uh, uh, three fourths from here to here. So this is right. The, the dowels here that we replaced, there's dowels in the back that screw in here that we replaced. I'm gonna dowel this just in case all the way through so it doesn't break like this one did. Remember this is dowel all the way up into here. So once we straighten these out, they should fit flush and square and it'll be a lot better than it was. So this is the issue that, that I knew that we were gonna come into when we started coming into this point. After sanding this down to that line that we drew with the pencil with the right angle, um, correct angle, um, I squared this off. Look at the fit now. It fits like a thousand times better. Like right up in there. That's that's the way. See, that's, that's so much better right there. And it's lined up with the front the way it's supposed to be. The back. See, now that's, well, that's, that's the way it should be. Now these holes are going to be a little bit off on these nail holes because we had, remember, we had to scoot this whole seat back about a half an inch, which that puts these whole, nail holes farther to the outside. But we had to, this is important. We had to get this done. This is the most important thing to make this a square. We don't want this thing falling apart again. I'm going to go ahead and do the right side now. Same thing. I've already marked it. We just got to go to our lines. And the only one that's off is this one back here. So this is your chisel job. Um, the, model, the line is on my side. And I'm just going to um, take off the bulk and then pair to my line. Okay. Right. Let's go test with this. Oh man, I think we did it. Yep, so it goes just like right there. And this back one, back part was off really, really, really bad. Lines up with the front like it's supposed to. So now we've got to deal with these like little holes and stuff from the, from the nails and stuff that were in there. And we have to clean that up for our dowel repair, put a dowel in here. So we're getting close to be able to mount these on there. This is getting exciting. I'm going to install the arms, however, I found another issue. There's a gap between this arm and the back on both sides. And the issue is, is that this isn't straight. This uh, is, it's, it is a space there. And it's causing an angle. Um, you see that little bitty gap right there? That's what we're showing here. So what I've got to do is put this on the bench chisel that to a 90 degrees so it's not like that on both of those and then that'll fix that issue and then and then we can install these so we're going to spend a few minutes making those straight all right let's try that okay i think we got this one arm is level right and we cleaned up the gap that was in there. It's not secured, so the back gap is pretty large. But once you squish it down, see how it closed up? 
So we try to take a lot of that off. We have to chisel because it was at an angle. Okay, let's mark this to drill it. We're gonna put little screws like this from the back. So we need to mark where, where this goes. And we need to mark where the screw is gonna come through. So one screw is gonna come through like right about here. The other one's like right about here. We can't have the screw poking through the front. Remember, this piece is reinforced with a dowel that goes through here so it will not break. Okay, so you know where the top is. Now we just have to get the thickness of the board so we know where to put our screw. So that's how thick the board is. Doesn't matter on the side. And we forgot to put one marking at the end of the board. All right, so we have where the screws are gonna go in from the back marked. We've got, so that's where this piece will fit into, where it's level. We'll put the level on here. And then we gotta drill the hole right straight through the middle that way. Drill right there. Two screws going that way. And then we'll, we'll once, because then we'll know we can see where to put them if we drill from this side because we know exactly where they're going to go. So we're going to mark the other side and get these, get these, uh, get this uh, mounted up. Okay, these are the screws that go into the back that holds the arm on. This one goes at an angle and pulls it up in this way. And this one pulls it back. And there's, there's, uh, it's flush and level here like I, like I wanted it to be. Um, I got to fix that little piece. It's good in the back here. I mean, I know this thing's got a thousand repairs on it, but this is going to be this is going to be brilliant. So this will be this will be screwed down and uh, or, or doweled down here in the front, and it's the way it looks before you start. You also pop this on there, and remember this is this is uh, reinforced with a dowel that's not broken. This is the broken side that is repaired with a dowel in it, so this should be fine. So the reason why we're screwing these on now is so we can mark the holes where we're going to screw into the end grain on the legs. So we're going to do this now, put this up here, mark it, and then uh, drill them out, attach them. I've marked, drilled, and countersunk everything. And now we're going to make sure everything goes together before we add a little bit of glue to this surface. Down. We will see. Okay, now you can get a sense of what it looks like. Um, this is the part that is lacking. I haven't even started this. The whole chair was like this, if you remember. And now we've got it all the way down to wood. Looks really good. I still have to clean it up just a tiny bit with sanding. I put the dowels in. We just got to let those dry and cut these off in a minute. This is the part we're going to focus on now. I've got to figure out how these miters are done, how these miters are held together. We have to figure that out. We're going to have to use a stripper to get in here to make this all clean, to, to remove that, uh, that paint. So let's put this on the table and see what we got. And I've got to figure out how the miters are together. I'm thinking that if I take these off, there's going to be a screw or something that goes in this way. So these will have to come off because there's, there's just, that's, I think that's how this is held together. Let me take these off and look. Nice and easy. Okay, those are nailed. And these, this is nailed together. If there's a nail that goes through here. So we have to take that nail, we have to take that off. Let's get something thin and put in here and remove the other side. These are nails in here. And so what I think that I'm going to do is um, once I get this thing apart, if I can, there we go. Got to be super careful. I don't want to damage this wood and I don't want to bend these nails all up. We've got it broken down into its components. And I just wrote on here what is what. And as I clean them, I'll make sure that I transfer those marks so I don't mess up, you know, where they go. And we're basically going to pull these nails out, clean the joints, strip it, 
and attach it the same way with the nails, I think. I don't know. We'll decide when we get to that point. We just got to make sure the 45s look good. And that's it. So this is going to be stripper action. We got to break out the stripper to get all up in here. But there you go. They were so bad before. You see this will, this will, that one looks like it matches that one. But you come down here, and then when you start putting it together, it doesn't it doesn't work. And typically, I find this on a lot of parts. I have no idea why I got to fix these, but maybe it wasn't cut right the first time. But it seems like I'm always repairing these these 45s. Let's put this in a corner clamp and see what it does. Well, this isn't going to work. I don't have, uh, my corner clamps aren't large enough for this thick of a board. The magic ingredient for these, uh, for these frames is to have perfectly the same length of boards, which as you can see that they're not. One of each is longer, and you have to have a perfect 45. So if these two that run this way and this way are the same length, and these two and these two, same length, exactly same length as each other, exactly the same length of each other and 45s, it will fit. Well, they're not the same length and they're not 45s, exactly. So I'm gonna have to recut them exactly, exactly, exactly to 45s and exactly the same length. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna clean up these 45s. You can see it's not even the same length. And this is the same length in one spot, not in the other, if I can get that in the light. See, it's not even straight. So the only way I figured out how to cut 45s and make this work is I take my two work pieces that need to be exactly the same length together. I set my miter gauge up to a 45 and I use this gauge and I use this gauge. So I make sure that this thing's at a 45. I'll do a test cut to make sure and I'll measure the cut to make sure it's a 45 before I commit to my actual piece. And then I'll cut these 45s and they'll be the same length, same angle. It should fit together really nicely. Um, this is the only way I figured out how to do it. I probably will clamp this piece to here with a clamp when I when I cut them and um, It's kind of challenging on this one. We'll see if I can do it and uh, that's it And then I mean <laughs> if it's right if it, everything works out, this should be perfect Okay, this is the test fit Fits a thousand times better a tiny gap there that I would need to squish it together it fits like it should right now. The same angle, say, these are the same length, these are the same length and the 45, so they work really well. Um, I came back with the, uh, the number five and I planed all my surfaces flat around the entire thing. Planed all these flat so these marry up and they fit perfectly on here without, you know, without any spaces. The top was planed also, so that fits like it's supposed to with no gaps right here, no seams. So it was all off, all old glue was in there. Same thing with this, this fits up in here, flat, no, no gaps or anything. Um, these right here also plain flat and clean. This one goes on this side and there's no gaps on this. So it's, it fits nice and flush like it should. So everything's <laughs> a lot, thousand times better than it was. Okay, so the mirror fits inside here. This, go, this is the backing. Um, I don't know if this is original or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my shoulder plane and I'm going to clean this stuff up because it's a little tight here. Cleaning up my shoulders, I forgot to turn the camera on, so I'm just going to show you the operation. It's obviously I've already done this and I've done it all, all the boards. But anyway, this is um, this is a shoulder of a tenon. That's the cheek of a tenon. And you use a shoulder plane to clean up this area here. Well, this is perfect for cleaning up these areas and I'll just do it real quick, a little operation real quick. And, and you see it'll clean that, it'll cut it. And I'm, now I'm gonna reference my side of my plane off this surface. 
and that's the way you do it. Now I've already done it. I don't want to take it any farther down, but I didn't show that operation, so that's what we do. So now uh, yeah, I made it just a tiny, tiny bit bigger, got rid of all the uh, old glue and all the old paint in here. Now that mirror's going to slide in here much, much, much better. Okay, to keep this thing together, um, I'm going to screw it and glue it. Originally there were nails going through here, and I'm using the original holes. I've uh, countersunk the top of the screw, and I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on this and then screw it together. And I get to use my new glue bot. Yay! That one's finally. So, glue it, glue it in here, and um, I said this before. I got uh, four kind of glue. So, this is how we keep it together, and um, that's not a good thing on here. Okay, and this decorative piece goes on to the outside. And I'll use the original nails to apply this, so it'll go, it'll go like that. I'm going in the same holes with these nails. No glue is necessary, I don't think. I need to get them started. I don't want to put too much, I don't want to put any pressure on my joint. Again, the original holes. Try not to stress out the, uh, my frame. That's okay, we've got these doweled on. And before they were just glued and they fell apart, they fell off. We've got this up here, it's level. And I got it clamped in 45 million different places. So I've got screws. I want to make sure that they don't go all the way through to the other side. And I'm going to mark my screw holes. And I want to do it in the deepest part where this is curved outwards and put the screw there. I want this to be able to be removable. So when I deliver it, I probably will not have this on and then put it on when I, when I set it up. It's probably how I'll do it because I don't want this to cause any problems, break or come off or anything. So let's go ahead and drill these holes. Okay, we got it almost 100% complete. We've got to come through and we have to hand sand everything, make sure all the corners are right, go over, make sure that everything is filled in properly. Everything is done right. You just go over it one last time. We got to make sure that we can uh, check with the customer, pick the right stain for this. And uh, we've got to, you know, obviously put the glass in, but I will, I will do that later, the mirror. I'm just coming through and cleaning everything up right now. Do a little, you know, chamfer on the, on the, on the corners. It makes it look a lot better and also it's uh, nicer to the touch. And I'm just going to come through and clean the whole thing up and we'll start staining. There's this broken part right on the back of the chair here. And um, see if I can do this. Oh man. And um, so I'm gonna use uh, super glue and some activator and put a patch in there. I'd rather do it this way than, than um, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Uh. Okay, I'd rather put an actual real piece of wood in there than um, and clean that up than, than epoxy or something like that. I put some timber mate, some wood filler where that crack was, there's a tiny one there. And um, I just need to clean it up just a little bit and see if you get where you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just, you know, gotta, a sanding block and I'm just gonna make sure that this is perfectly flat right there now that's see there's a there's a space there because the wood was broken and like a dum-dum I didn't fix it before I attached it so I had to do it while it was on so there you go that part is fixed okay we're ready for staining using Minwax uh, Red Oak 215 and um, I just use paper towels and I just put it on and then wipe it off with paper towels. So we're going to go ahead and, God, that is so pretty. God, look how pretty that is. Man, that is so nice.
There we go. The stain. I just put this up here so I can take a picture of it before I clear it. <clears throat> so everything's good to go. This is the repair, remember? Right here. You can't even see it. So this turned out really nice. Super excited about this. Super, super excited. I'm gonna let this dry all night long and when I come in in the morning, I'm gonna see if there's any touch-ups that need to be done and then any other kind of coloring that we have to do to, to make something match. Um, and if, if we need to do that, we'll take care of that and we'll clear it and basically it's done after it's cleared. We need to make the little pieces that go on the corners here that hold the mirror down and they'll have a little angle on them and then I'll nail through and we'll nail into the frame and this didn't come with any it just came with the mirror but there was no way to keep it in so we're going to go ahead and make those and we're going to use this piece of oak for that i'll show you how we're going to get this raggedy looking piece of oak make it look real pretty and uh make these little oak pieces that go in the corners Okay, we finally got our pieces cut and I uh, had to put a little groove in there and that groove fits down onto the mirror because it's inset just a little bit and um, I cut my 45s. I just lined my 45s up with the original frame that's in there and this will be down. It fits snugly, kind of snaps in there. That's good. So now I've got to get little nails and uh, tack the nails in. It overhangs this part a little bit because the mirror is too thick to put the nail in an angle like you normally would. So I got to get the nail up here, put an angle in here. And I also have to drill a pilot hole for those because you'll end up splitting these, uh, splitting this wood without a pilot hole that I found out. So anyway, this is just uh, an oak frame and it fits in there if I can snap it back in. Okay, nail in time. So, just make sure it's snug where it's supposed to go and I always put a board on top of my glass just in case my pre-drilled hole and now it's got a guide to go in there and if I slip I'll hit my uh, my my piece right here okay check it out it's in okay that is the third coat Completed. I have to wait till it dries. Tomorrow I'll attach the hardware. So basically, this is a can't touch it. Just got to let it relax. But it looks really, really, really good. It's going to be awesome with this third coat. I discovered that the bracket that I made for the mirror to hold it in is touching so I got to cut these off so it'll fit inside this and that's what I'm going to do now we're going to go ahead and tack these down and uh, mount it up there dust it off it should be finished after this You can see now where I had to cut these out so it would fit. And I just penciled it, you know. It's, uh, it looks good. So now it fits and it's secure on the back of it and it's flush with the brackets like it's supposed to be. So this is gonna work just fine.
okay. After sanding and polishing everything, I decided to go ahead and put it in my little homemade electrolysis tank to clean up the, uh, to clean it up. You can see it's working. Um, I'm trying to get the inside the best that I can. There are bubbles coming out on the inside. So we're gonna leave this in here and see if we can electrolysis clean this thing. This is complete. Looking really, really good. Fix and go deliver it. And uh, the only thing that's not complete is the the bucket, of course, which is in the electrolysis. This is going to be delivered here in a few minutes. This is still working. I'm going to let this work for a couple hours, probably overnight. I've got to get the inside of this clean, clean, and then I'll finish it tomorrow, if, you know, and then deliver it then. The hall tree is completely finished. It is now delivered to the customer and they were super happy with it. And she actually found where that other bracket goes. It goes right here for a little hats. We're gonna find another bracket and we're gonna attach that on there later. And the bucket is still in electrolysis. So it's a complete project.